Welcome to Hoffmann Photography. My name is Rainer and if you have ever wondered why one of the most popular sharpening filters in editing programs has that strange name Unsharp Mask, then you've come to the right place. Here is some probably unsettling news for you. Adobe didn't invent unsharp masking. It's actually a technique of the old darkroom days. However, it requires a high degree of precision and it works best with really large negatives. Here is how it's done. This is a negative that is not quite sharp. From this negative, we make an even more out of focus positive by contact printing the negative on film. This is way overdone to illustrate the principle. Both the negative and the blurred positive must be perfectly aligned. Hence, the two tiny holes at the top of the film that go over two small pins that need to be perfectly aligned. The negative and the blurred positive are placed in the negative carrier not shown here, which is then placed in the enlarger head. The negative and the positive must be in close contact for the unsharp masking to work properly. The negative and the positive are then projected onto photographic paper to make the positive print. This print then appears to be sharper than the original negative. I'm saying appears to be sharper because there is a caveat. More on that later. Now let's do that in our image editing software. There's just one major difference. Since digital photography is not a negative positive process, we start with a positive image and make an unsharp negative from that positive. Apart from that, it's pretty much the same process. This is a not quite sharp positive from which I have made a blurred negative and placed it on top of the positive as a layer. There is another, even more blurred negative, and a third one that is very blurred indeed. I'll start with the least blurred negative. The trick here is to choose the correct layer blend mode. In this case, it is the blend mode Reflect. And indeed, the resulting positive looks sharper than the original. Let's toggle the visibility of the unsharp layer on and off a couple of times to see the effect. The effect on the image is even more pronounced with a more blurred negative and already we can see a problem of the unsharp masking. There are distinct halos at the edges of the roof and other parts of the image. This effect is even more pronounced when I use the very blurry negative. Let's zoom in a bit and this is a problem with unsharp masking in general. Let's see the real unsharp mask filter in action. I'll explain those parameters later, but let me just show that the effect of the unsharp mask filter is pretty much the same, including the halos. So what's going on here? Here is a little thought experiment. Let's assume we have a wall that is painted dark gray on one side and light gray on the other. The boundary between dark gray and light gray shall be absolutely sharp. If we take a photo of this wall with a perfect camera, a perfect lens and a perfect light capturing device, which of course don't exist, and if we then plot the brightness values of the photo, the resulting graph would look like this. At the border between dark gray and light gray, the brightness value in the photo changes from say 20% brightness to 80% brightness without any transition. In reality, however, the photo of the wall is never a perfect representation of the brightness values. If we zoom in enough, there will be a fuzzy transition from dark gray to light gray. And there will be some brightness variations even in otherwise homogeneous areas. 
The brightness plot then looks like this. In a digital photo, we of course can't have smooth gradients, like in this example. A digital photo of the wall would look like this. Again, there is a transition from dark gray to light gray, but the transition is no longer smooth, but there are distinct steps in the brightness values. And there is some noise in the gray areas. Plotting the brightness values results in this graph. Let's assume that the stepwise transition from dark gray to light gray happens over four pixels. Or two pixels to the left and two pixels to the right from the original green plot. Now here is what the unsharp masking filter does. It usually has three parameters. Radius, factor, that would be amount in Photoshop, and threshold. The filter tries to detect any sudden change in brightness or color, and 4 pixels does count as sudden. So let me set the radius to 2 pixels. That's 2 to the left and 2 to the right. Now watch what happens when I crank up the factor or amount. The pixels on the left side are made darker and the pixels on the right are made brighter. This results in an increased contrast at the border between the dark gray and the light gray area. If we would zoom out sufficiently, this increased contrast would look like a sharper demarcation between the dark and the bright area. However, this increase in contrast comes with two serious side effects. There will be bright halos and dark fringes at the edges and around objects and the noise in homogeneous areas will be increased. This is why we have the threshold parameter. As long as the threshold is set to zero, the contrast between adjacent pixels is increased no matter how small the brightness difference between the pixels is. And that's the reason for the increased noise. A higher threshold value means that the contrast between adjacent pixels will only be increased if the brightness difference of the pixels is greater than the threshold value. This reduces the increase in noise, but generally also the sharpening effect at the edges between dark and bright objects. If you increase the threshold value to 100% or 255 levels in Photoshop, the increased contrast at the edges vanishes completely because there can't be any two pixels with a brightness difference of more than 100%. So, when you use the unsharp mask filter, the general rule is don't overdo it. Once you clearly see those halos in 100% view, you've done too much. Be especially careful with the radius. Again, less is more. Thanks for watching and happy sharpening!